Hello, welcome to Chrysalis Invictus Tarot. My name is Elizabeth. I'm just shuffling out the piles as we speak. So we have pile number one. How are you guys doing? This is an energy check-in reading. So I'm going to take a look at maybe what's going on in your energy fields. What's happening with you at this time? Maybe some advice about energy work you could look into. Any imbalances in your chakras and overabundance of energy somewhere. So we're going to take a look at that. And we have three piles. And I'm shuffling them on camera or off to the side. Just as a way of really connecting in with whoever's going to be watching this video. Um, whoever's going to resonate with this. So we're asking for these messages to come in from our guides, our higher selves, whatever is, whatever we feel leads us and teaches us on our paths. I don't know if you're interested in this. I'm going to kind of ramble um, this morning. So all week I have been going out and into the forest before the sun rises. And I have had two days in a row of meeting a stag in the forest, and this is a first for me. I'm out all the time, and I never see stags unless I'm with um, a friend of mine who sees stags quite frequently. So I had this experience of I've been going through a lot, and I was in tears, <laughs> and there was this young deer that stood and we stared at each other and I just kind of like broke down and sat down on the on the ground and cried and there were people so I was sort of in the middle of this overgrown orchard and there were people on the trail nearby and the and the deer scattered and it turned out that there were there were deer all around me like all around me um it was a really powerful it was a really powerful time, really powerful moment. So maybe you've had these moments. Maybe you can share them in the comments below. Let me know what your profound magical experiences in the trees have been or with nature. I certainly um, have had my awareness brought to many birds <laughs> over the last week. But I've really found it to be meditative and healing to go out at the beginning of the day. Although I have to say that it's hard to um, feel like the rest of the day measures up <laughs> when you have such a good morning. So we're almost done here with pile number three. Just one more card for pile number three. And so maybe by now you have gotten a sense of which pile is which for you. I'm going to go ahead and put this on pile number one. There's pile number two and pile number three. So let's take a calming deep breath in through the nose, out through the nose. And when you're ready, finding your pile. Okay, pile number one, welcome to your reading. So let's take a look at what energies are really dominant for you at this time. So there's a lot of emotional energy here. Blue is the color of the throat chakra. I'm getting... Swallowing your words, swallowing your words, swallowing your words. It's almost like they come up to the surface and then they just sort of slip back down. Um, so it could be that you're in a situation right now where you're not really feeling safe to speak. Um, particularly about your emotions. There's a turbulent, um, perhaps a turbulent energy between you and the people that you need to express these emotions to. Perhaps you're afraid of their response. 
Um, I'm really feeling more, more or less that for some of you, it could be that the people that you're dealing with are unreasonable. And for some of you, this is a response to a history with people where it's felt unsafe. Let's take a look at what other cards we have here. So Thea. Yeah. yeah. And Urania. All right, so I'm getting that something has threatened your pride or your sense of dignity. And that's where this like rush of emotions comes up and you know that you need to, to speak to someone about it. But yeah, it's almost like you get lost in the current or each time you go to speak to them, it could be that you have a really good relationship. So for some of you, you have a really good relationship with this person and you know that you need to speak to them. But each time you see them, it's kind of like, oh, I love this person, you know, and you get caught up in vibing with them and kind of forget to bring it up. And here, yeah, I'm getting a deep sense of mourning from this card. There's this lamenting this also speaks to for for those of you that this resonates with this is the past issues that are creating this discomfort with bringing your feelings forward so we have solar plexus throat and third eye at work here i'm not yet getting a particular blockage or overabundance per se, but just that these are the energies that are at play at present. We'll take a look at the tarot cards and see if we have more information here. The Eight of Wands. Something may be moving faster than you want it to. Um... Like something felt really good. And so you were caught up in the current of it. And now you want to kind of slow down. And you're having a hard time expressing that. So this could be romantically. It could be to do with a job. Um, you know, things can be really exciting at first. And then when we get the time to integrate or feel comfortable we um we need to pull back and sort of reevaluate so i'm getting that there's a bit of that going on here that the energy was a little bit faster than you would have liked you're afraid potentially that if you speak up you will be cast out so for those of you where this is a past situation, just remembering that or taking a look at the person in question and or situation in question and fully acknowledging whether this person is what you fear or if you are fearing past situations. But you are... There, I'm getting, so I'm getting two different things here. I'm getting that there is an overabundance of solar plexus energy. And an overabundance of solar plexus energy is when we defend ourselves through ego. Um, and we can be prideful. Um, so this can come out as stubbornness. This can come out as freezing people out. Just refusing to to budge and being somewhat formidable. Um, and then for some of you, this is a lack of that. So a lack of pride in yourself, a lack of self-esteem, not really fully understanding who you are. And that's part of why you don't want to speak up because you're not sure you have the right to or the place to. And the Knight of Chalices. Okay. 
there's a deep base current of love and support It may help you to take a higher perspective, just so to um, come up into the crown energy. And in case you're wondering how you can work with these things, um, there's frequencies on YouTube, there's meditations for each chakra. Um, so just, you know, looking into those resources. Um, I'm definitely getting the sense that it would be helpful for you with all of this um, water energy to, to meditate, to allow yourself to meditate, to seek guidance for the best way forward, how you can approach this person or this situation with open honesty but it takes fortifying this um, solar plexus chakra. So either balancing an overabundance of energy there or, um, you know, there's a defensiveness through intellect as well that you may be favoring the head over the heart, even though all this whole situation has to do with heart energy, really. Um, you know, there could be feelings of grief here and you're gifted this situation in order to unlock further situations. So if you are able to move through this blockage here in the throat chakra and um, slow down, meditate. It will help further situations. It will give you the tools. It will help to build your toolkit for further situations. So this is a short reading. That's what I have for you. I hope this was helpful and we'll see you soon. Okay, pile number two. This is your energy reading let's take a look at what um what chakras what energy centers are represented here and what advice there may be okay so we have a really interesting combination to start off with we have crown and root so in the celtic chakra um, system the crown and the root are the cauldron of warming and the cauldron of warming represents life so it is your vital energy um, it's what drives life forward so if we have um <laughs> ennui <laughs> if we're having existential crises if we're having sort of bouts of deep depression or sort of feeling a lack of drive in our lives, we can work with balancing this cauldron of warming in order to, to come back to that. And part of that work is, so if you think of the crown and the root as the, the roots and the branches of the tree, you have to nourish the roots in order for the branches to grow um, higher and taller. So to reach that divine wisdom, you have to grow your roots deeper. So this is connecting with ancestors. This is connecting with your body. Um, you know, really putting yourself into a physical practice. So yoga, dance, Pilates, running, whatever it is that you do in a sacred way. So it's in, it's invoking a spiritual sensibility in in all that you do in that way very interesting okay we have <laughs> all right so we've got some heart chakra stuff going on we have the full spectrum here but there's definitely a primal energy so we're looking to really fortify the root in order to allow all other energy centers to flourish but particularly the heart. 
So this could be about connecting in with um, some of, if you are healing um, family, familial wounds, familiar patterns, if that resonates with you, um, through that work, you start to open your heart. Some of you have a shamanic energy, so this is connecting in with primal energies. And the gateway to that is, again, through the heart. I'm also getting for some of you that music is going to be really important, that as you sing, you open your heart, that those two things are connected or that music and your heart are connected. And the more that you open that space, um, the louder <laughs> or the stronger the healing will come in. And we have earth energy here. Again, root and heart. Root and heart chakra is pile number two. Those are your... Um, those are the spaces that you're guided to. And there's healing. There's so much healing happening here. And this is a healing of the mind through the heart. So some of the anxieties that you have, if you start to open and listen to your heart, those anxieties will pass away, pass by or pass away is what I, is what I said. Um, but that is the, that's the gateway, um, is to heal the heart space. Really, that's a, that's a, a dominant message here. Um, let's take a look at, at your tarot cards. Okay. So in general, these cards are blue, which is the color of the throat chakra, but we're taking a look at more, the more subtle energies here. And there's a need for a balancing of root and crown. Again, root and crown. And if you think of the heart as the it's sort of the goal of this root and crown work is to begin to open the heart. Because as you're connecting with the song that sings the universe with that ethereal energy and the rooted energy, you feel more stability, you feel more support, you feel more connection and love, and you're able to open that heart space. There's also some divine things that you're making space for. So this could be a divine partner or a child or, you know, whatever it is that you're calling in. This is co-creation with the universe, essentially. Um, and so as you're working to clear these, um, as you're working to fortify the crown and root chakras and open the heart space, um, those things will be able to come through. Queen of Swords. There's a need here to keep thoughts to yourself. I'm getting. Ah, uh, okay. So there's been a wounding of the sacral chakra. So this could be through trauma um, in the worst cases or the an imbalance in the way that you're able to nurture. So all energies are present here, particularly with this card. Um, so this isn't completely straightforward in terms of like what you should be working with, um, but definitely wearing your, the visions of your third eye, trusting the visions of your third eye, Maybe not so, not so much trusting the, the words of others over your own intuition. And with the sacral, building trust with yourself. So building trust with yourself is, again, this work of the crown and the root, the cauldron of warming. Um, if you're interested, I have... On my bodymagic.ca website, I have in the shop 
a three-part series of classes on the cauldrons that you can take to help to open and work with these energy centers in these cauldrons. Um, but here, you know, it's almost like the sacral is the, is the last thing. Like you're preparing all the other energy centers and the sacral is connected than to this manifestation. So you want to be able to heal all of those things as you're bringing in. Yeah, okay. The Six of Wands is really interesting because it reminds me a lot of the Six of Swords from the traditional Rider Waits. But you have someone journeying off into the sun. And so this is a brighter, um, vital energy. And again, we have the, the colors of the sacral coming through. So this is victory, but also we have all the colors represented as well. So being able to incorporate all energies together, but there is a victorious energy at the end of this. This is um, what I'm getting here is the work that you do with these, um, with these chakras, with these energy centers is going to be Irrevocable. I don't know if I said that right. <laughs> Sounds like I was drunk. Irre irrevocable? No, I need to stop trying to say it. Um, irreversible? <laughs> Whatever you do here is going to be like, it's, it, it's, a, it's a permanent change. It's something that um, you won't be able to go back on it. You'll be a new person through this work. So we're just keeping these readings short today. That's all I have for you. Thank you so much for joining me. Give this video a like. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know how this resonates. And if you have any further questions, please let me know. And we'll see you soon. All right, pile number three. Let's take a look at what's going on with your energies. These readings have been somewhat short. Um, so let's see what's going on with you. Interesting. Okay. So we have the root, the solar plexus, and the heart represented here. Um, really embodiment work is what I'm getting. Um, the mandrake root is the, there was a lot of superstition about it and they used to use dogs to harvest them because the roots scream as you pull them out of the ground. Um, so there's a lot of, if you want to go and take a look at it, there may be something about mandrake root that really resonates with you. It's definitely a very magical plant. Um, but what we're seeing here is the heart growing through connection to the root and you're using the solar plexus energy. So your power center your initiative, your active vital energy to connect in with the root. So I'm really getting physical practice here for you. Um, particularly an active one, one that gets your heart rate elevated and get, maybe you sweat, um, you know, that's, that's really incorporating not only strength, but um, strength and grounding. Like a lot of grounding exercises are... Um, you know, in a yoga pra practice, they'll just like have you really connect in with the earth. But another way of grounding in a practice is to hold a posture for a longer period of time, bring up the heart rate. Um, and there's links down below for my, um, my classes that I teach. So um, if that's something that you're interested in, you can find that in the description box below. Um, but there's definitely resources out there and available to you to help help you work on this. Let's see what other energies are represented. Mystic Sisters. Okay, so this is interesting. There's this dual purpose in your energy. Um, 
perhaps not warring factions, but they could be. So when your, when your energy becomes unbalanced, the two aspects of yourself begin to war with each other. When you bring yourself into balance, so I think it's through the physical practice actually, you are able to have harmony between these two sides. There's a need for you as well to meditate on your sacred your root, your lower chakras. So visualizing into those spaces, again, you can find on YouTube lots of great resources out there for meditations on the root, sacral, and solar plexus chakra. But I am also getting for some of you that there's a bit of an identity issue here. So maybe some, an inability to separate yourself from others or um, being confused about yourself, being of two minds always. Um, it could be that you're always interested in two different people at the same time. It could be that you, you feel like you always want to be home, but you always want to be traveling. Um, so like really conflicting needs and wants, but there is a way of coming into harmony with that. And that's definitely through the lower chakras here. So if you've been doing a lot of like, what feeds the crown? Um, a lot of, a lot of typical, I will say energy work favors the upper chakras. It favors the third eye, the crown, you know, um, connecting with stars and things of that nature. You're going to want to connect down, connect into plants. Um, but you may want to, if you're drawn to a plant, look into it, nurture it, grow it, um, you know, go through that process. This is all about material, bringing the energy into the material. I think that's also going to help you to manifest. Um, so if you've had any difficulties with manifesting or if you feel or perceive that you are not so good of a manifester as some of the people around you, it could be that connecting in with this grounding, rooted energy, your lower chakras will be really helpful. Yeah, here we have interesting. So your solar plexus, again, here we have an, an, an abundance of solar plexus energy that needs grounding and foundation. Surrounding it is the energy of the heart. She's holding a crystal to her heart as well. So there's some heart healing that, that's needed. But again, we see the heart grows from this um, work with the solar plexus and the root. Again, there's this feeling of mm, wanting to wander, but wanting to have stability and having that sort of inner conflict between the two. Let's see what the tarot cards have to say. Well, no wonder there's a new beginning. There's a threshold here. Um, I really feel like this is a journey into confidence for some of you or into the self, a more cohesive self, one that isn't dependent on other people or the opinions of other people or the energy of other people, but that is very rooted in the self. The dawn of a new day is what I just heard. Nine of chalices, what a great card, wish fulfillment. But what do we see for energy here? We have someone looking out over um, what I would consider to be a thriving energy. And coming in behind is this, um, this grounding energy. Deeply embedded in oneself. So if you have felt fragmented or floaty or chaotic, um, it could be <laughs> because that's your energy. And so working with these centers as best you can could be really helpful. And there could be um, a, an aspect that to that, again, I'm getting labor, like growing the plant, doing a physical, doing a physical thing. Um, it could be a craft, it could be um, a physical practice, it could be something material, definitely. 
um, is really going to help you to like get your hands dirty is what I'm hearing. There's also a sense of this being communal. So it could be that you're looking for a teacher. And if you are looking for a teacher, call out and ask for that teacher and they'll be brought, they'll be brought to you. You'll find them. They'll just randomly pop up on your feed or something. They're there for you because you are on the verge of manifesting, which is really, really super beautiful. And I'm really happy for you. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining. Please comment down below. Let me know how that resonated. Um, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye.